Hi. Today we're going to talk about one of the most popular algorithms out there called SVM or Support Vector Machines. So I'm going to tell you about three levels of classification. The first one is called Maximal Margin Classifier and is related to those problems in which we clearly can draw a line between a couple of different classes, in this, in this case the blues and the purples. The second type of models is they are called support vector classifiers and they allow for some misclassification. So here you can see that I have some purple circles and some blue circles in the wrong side. And in the next video I'm going to cover support vector machines, which basically that it's related to those problems in which we have to draw a couple of lines so we have to be smarter about that. So let's begin with a very simple example. So imagine that you're in a hospital and you're measuring blood oxygen saturation for patients of COVID-19. And then you have to make a decision. So you need to split those patients between healthy ones or at least not so no severe ones and those who need ventilation. So let's gather some data. So here we have the blood saturation for some patients and here we have blood saturation for the other one. So in this case, it's very simple. So it's, it's very straightforward to draw a line separating both cases. So I can take a look at those patients who are at the extremes and I'm going to call that the margin. So basically I can draw a line at the middle of the margin, okay? In this case, if I have a new patient, here is the blue one and, and the saturation is in, this, in the left side of this margin, I'm going to say that this needs ventilation. And on the other hand, if I have a patient in which saturation is in this side here, I'm going to, de to decide that this is a healthy patient. Okay, so, so far so good. Maximal margin classifier basically tries to find that line. In this case, it was very simple, so you, we just simply have to take the middle point of this margin. But what, what happens in several dimensions? Okay, in this case, it's very simple, as I was saying, because the only thing we have to classify is which are the parameters beta 0 and beta 1 that are lower than 0. If I'm in this area, and I'm going to say this is red. If I'm reversing the sign, I'm in the green one. Okay, you can actually notice with some math mathematics that the, the line is ex exactly at minus beta zero divided by beta one. In two dimensions it's a bit more complicated because we have to draw a line, we can decide to, to write the equation of the line in this form and basically you have to say which ones are below the line would be the purples and which ones are above the line, in this case would be the blues. In three dimensions of course and n dimensions in general margin, uh, maximal margin classifiers are basically trying to find a hyperplane which is the name of a straight line in several dimensions that splits the data into sides. Right? But this only works for linearly separable problems, uh, main meaning problems in which you don't have any overlap between classes. What's the best way to draw those lines? So I can imagine different lines. So in one dimension it was very simple, but what happens in several dimensions? So here you have some examples and I have to decide which one is best. So let's take a look at this. Uh, this looks nice, but as you can see here, these points are very close to the line. So if I miss, if I move this line a little bit, I'm going to misclassify those points. So this doesn't look very safe. I could use this one because now these maximal points, maximal closest points are not far apart, but it looks weird because I have a lot of empty space here that doesn't fit very well. So is there any criterion to do this? Yes, there is. And here is the answer. So imagine that we take the closest points to a, the, a draw line. I'm going to call the margin uh, this separation. And these points are actually called support points. And actually this gives the name support vector machines to these kind of algorithms. So in this case, the support points are really close to that line. But in my mind, there is something weird here. So I, I somehow I feel that the blue points fall into this helipsoid and into this area here and the purple points fall more or less like here. So if I take a look at these points, this line doesn't seem to represent very well the separation between these areas. So I would like to, to have a larger separation and this is going to give me more flexibility. Going back to this example, as I was saying, these two points are so close that any move of this line from to the left or to the right are going to cl classify this point. So we'd rather prefer more neutral space between groups. I would like to maximize the distance between groups. And the natural choice is what they call maximal margin hyperplane, which is the separated hyperplane which the margin is largest. What do I mean by that? Let's take this example. So if I draw this line and then I take the support points, in this case this blue and this uh, red point, then the margin is something like this. Okay, I could try to draw a different line. 
like that and in this case the margin is very narrow and let's take this other one and here the margin seems to be uh, larger than in the other two cases so if I have to choose between those three lines I'm going to take the line which maximizes the margin and this is why this is called maximal margin classifier but of course life is not so simple never is so what if instead of having this situation I have something like this so I have some purple points that seems to be in the vicinity of the blue ones and some blue points in the vicinity of the purple points. So of course, this is not going to work because there's not going to be any solution that can split the data right away. So what I have to do is basically allows for some misclassification. So I have to make a, a sacrifice, a compromise between accuracy and, and flexibility. So this is a traditional bias versus bias trade-off that I discussed in another video. So in this case, let's go back to a one-dimensional situation. Imagine that I have a patient here. So I have different choices. I could choose this line, for instance, and then this blue green one would be misclassified. I could choose this one, and in that case, the red one is going to be misclassified. Or I could just remove that point and try to go to the largest margin. So this looks more reasonable to me. So if you compare this situation with this one, okay, just one point is not going to spoil all the basket, okay? So basically what I'm going to do is try different possibilities. So, and, and we have a tool for that, it's cross-validation. So let's imagine that I remove that point and then this is the best choice. And then let's randomize the situation. So I'm going to allow for C misclassifications and, and cross-validation is going to tell me what's the optimal value for C. So let's do some experiments. Okay, let's okay, compare those two points. And then the boundary is going to be here. And now this is misclassified, but okay, one is okay. Let's take like, this couple of points. Now the binder is here. And then let's try this one. I have two misclassified. So if C is larger than, than two, then I'm okay. If C is equal to one, then this is not okay. So I couldn't, couldn't consider this situation. Okay. So I have to run this all over the data set and then decide randomly which is the best possibility. This is called support vector classifier. So this is not exact anymore. So I don't have a clear cut boundary. So I have a kind of soft boundary, something which is allowing for this misclassification. So I don't want to scare you with mathematics, but basically the idea is that we have a maximization problem. So I have some parameters that I have to find. I have some constraint on the parameters and I have some function that I want to maximize, okay? According to some penalty. This is not very interesting mathematically because now nowadays this is program in, in all the libraries that we are going to use. But the interesting thing is that in the end, basically what I'm doing here is define a function, which is actually a linear function. So you have a new data point like this X, I'm going to compare the distance to this point to the line, okay? This is done using this uh, dot product, okay? The dot product basically tell me more or less what's the projection of this new point into the old points, okay? What's the role of C? So the margin. So if I have large C, the, the margin is softer because I'm going to allow for more misclassifications and I'm going to have a more flexible parameter. If C is a small, I'm going to have a harder margin, then the margin is going to be a smaller and the error in the misclassification is going to be compromised. Okay, so I have always this trade-off between flexibility and variance. What if I have this situation? So what if I have blues and then purples and then blue again? So I cannot imagine any line that can cross these points in a very specific way. I could imagine this line, but then all these points are going to be misclassified. I could try with this one, but then these points will be misclassified. So this is a case in which the, the points are not linearly separable. And I have to devote another video for this. Okay, This is where fun gets into play with nonlinear kernels.